Welcome back. Yeah, I'm ready for another another big one. It, it is we've a big some, day. Yeah, we've had some great ones today, and it's just been a, a great day. And what a, what a nightcap, so to speak. Uh, you know, it's a, it's crazy. a guest coming on that, man, I have a tremendous amount of respect for in, 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 our, in our own neck of the woods. So I'm excited for this one. Dude, it, it's, it's a great night. So let's think about this weekend. Let's, let's rewind for 48 hours. So yeah. we get to Oklahoma State yesterday, working with coaches. Um, Coach Chippy stopped by. We got the chance to work with Scotland and it literally Cheyenne Factor. That was crazy, right, yeah. yesterday. What a day. Um, coaches on that level. Um, and then you come back here. Um, this morning we pick up. We start talking to Kara. Kara was amazing. Kara Bonner from Towson, great softball player. Got some time to talk to Coach Jimmy from the Oklahoma, Kansas City Chief. Boomer, yeah. let's go. And then we just got done talking to the world's strongest man, Nick Bass. Wasn't that crazy, Dane? Yeah. Oh, man, that was uh, a lot of stuff learned today that you, you won't soon forget and pass on to that next generation. So He told he great. said to talk about, like, increments, right? So you know how they do the frying pan? So I started with paper plate. I was able to rip the paper plate. So I'm like, I'm on my way, right? <laughs> yeah. so there you go. pretty cool. <laughs> so at the nightcap, Dane, like you said, we've always made it a point. We love this audience. This yeah. show has been great to us. We're literally on worldwide yeah. from Finland to Florida, right? But we always say we want to come back and showcase yeah. our local heroes. I feel like, and Dane feels like this too, the biggest influences on the world are those local coaches getting it done yep. at a local level. So yep. um, coach just came off of a recent national championship that Sid played for, right? Is that correct? Dane? Yeah. 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 yeah he, and I, he, he was gracious enough to let her join his already stellar team and she did crazy. what she could for him. And, and, you know, they, they did, they took care of business like everybody around here knows they could. So, <laughs> and they took home the, the championship, which was That's a awesome. great thing. That's awesome. So I don't want to waste any more time. This has been one people have been asking for for a long time, yep. Dane. So let's get right down to it and break on, bring on the head coach of the independent Iowa Cyclones, Coach or, Daniel Gutsman. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I, that's what I meant. Wichita <laughs> Cyclones, I wanted to get to. I'm so used to competing against you guys. Wichita Cyclones. Coach, how you doing, man? <laughs> Wonderful. I, I, I brought this. I know that everybody wants to see it, you know. Oh, man. Yes. Awesome. You know, the national championship trophy. Yep. It's right here yeah. beside me. You some know, hardware. I, I joked around. I joked around with Brandy that I was just going to sit here with my ring on like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of scratch your face a little bit. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, but yeah. She said that might be a little, little much. You know, I got gotta, I gotta tone it down a little bit. No, so, man, that's hey, awesome. You, know, you earned yeah, it, man. You, well, well you earned. Deserve, you, know? you deserved every. You know, my eleven girls earned that. They learned every yeah. little bit of that, and and I am more, more proud of them than I could ever be. And so, oh yeah, man, so much yeah. fun. And, well, and, just, and, for you, and uh, I just want to add an extra thank you for letting me uh, do play by play for your games. It, it was a joy to joy to see and a joy to experience. So thank you for that. I I, uh, I got to see a few of them. There was one that I was watching when with Addie when she hit her ball. You know, she, we wanted to see how close it was, and it was interesting to see how you you called the game. And then when I talked to all my parents this week, um, they all were just over the moon about it about how do we get him how do we keep him how do we get him i mean shane has some good stuff but you know you you really were good they, they really liked you and so, I, so appreciate I appreciate it. you doing that i mean it made my mom and dad were watching it here and they said it you know it actually felt like they were really watching the a live you know World series game uh you know like a college level game so it was uh, that's good that that makes it good that makes it fun for the people that uh, can't be there don't make his head any bigger daniel it's already hard <laughs> to fit through the door man let's go <laughs> no, he's great we call him the voice of uh softball for a reason man so uh daniel we've got thank you again for letting dan be a part of that and said yeah. we've got some questions for you man uh wichita as a whole wichita fast pitch and everybody in the metro area knows who you are man but believe it or not you're just you have to embrace it. You're a local legend. So we got some questions for you. Legend. I, don't wanna, I don't know if that's yeah. a good thing or bad thing. <laughs> infamous, infamous or famous, right? <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. I don't. What am I famous for? Yeah, I mean, right. Everybody I'm just kidding. know me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the first one, coach, and I'll hit it first, and Dan will go a second. Thinking about coaching and softball and all the things you've done, take me back to when it began, man. Even before working with the Wichita Cyclones, before them, not Iowa. Going back, when did you first start coaching, man? Uh, when well, I mean, I played, I played catcher. Um, you know, when I was growing up, and then through high school, we won state championship in, at Derby, and then I played at TCU. I was a catcher yep. at TCU, and I feel like. No matter what, the catcher is always the coach on the field. I preach that to my catchers yep. when they're behind the plate, that the home plate mm -hmm. points to you. 
And I may be able to call the game from the dugout, but you are my voice on the field. So Mm -hmm. I would say coaching, you know, started from when I was little, you know, like my little girls, when I'm, when I'm having that, I call them little, they're not little anymore, but um, when they're out there, you know, the, the catcher uh, is the one in charge. She's telling everybody where to be and directing traffic. And so I think that's where I started my coaching, you know, and then really when I had to start coaching, um, was when we went to T-ball. Uh, we started T-ball when Addie was five. And um, John Crippen told me that the only way Addie was going to be able to play T-ball was if I coached because he didn't have enough coaches to run a T-ball team. And so uh. I said, let's go. And we started there. And I mean, we just kept on from there. So we did one year T-ball and then we went straight to 8U and, and the rest is, I mean, you guys History. know the rest. We just kept we going. Do. and. And, you know, I've lost a few girls over the way. They've all moved on. Uh, they've moved on to some different things. And, and some of them have not played. But I've had this core for a very, very long yeah. time. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the yeah. fact that my girls stay together. They're great girls. And yeah. it makes coaching easy when it's that way. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah. I, I just I, I, I love this team. They're a great group yeah. of people. <clears throat> Oh yeah. And I've had the chance to meet every single one of them. I've, I've talked to each one of them individually. And, and like you say, the, the daughters that they have that play for you are just kind of a, a smaller version of them. They're great people. And um, we, I, I love whenever we're around your team that, that you have that feel of family. So but yeah. now, yeah. now going into that, what was it about softball that, that got you to coaching? Was it your daughters or what was it that yeah. endeared you well, to softball? My wife, played uh college softball she played at dodge city where we met our freshman year junior college and uh, and then she played up in in south dakota at Tatanka university in huron and and so you know watching softball i love baseball um but man softball so much more fun to be truthful yeah. it's so much yeah. faster um the game it it's, it's very strategic very tactical you know moving people different ways um playing the it's more it's not just hitting and throwing and so I love I love softball I would watch softball all day long if I could over baseball and so I think when I got started in softball with t-ball and Brandy you know watching her over the years where we were dating um it just it just became something that I've gotten involved in and now that I have my two that I get to play around with it it just it's part of me you know I still coach baseball with my little one my my son I coach I help coach his baseball team but I mean it's 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 not softball like it's yeah it's boring sometimes to watch because it's so slow um so that's how I think I got into softball I know I mean I I, I'm married into softball which I'm very very happy about that and uh Brandy you know being in softball, she understands all of the things that, that she had to do when she was that age and all of the things that it takes to get better. And so she's, she's always out there helping me push the girls and she's always out there helping the girls when I can't be there. Um, and so I'm very thankful for that. And so I, I think that it's just a, uh, it's just a family thing that, that we've, we've grown up in here now that that's got me mm-hmm. into softball. Man, I'm just, I'm processing, you know, coach. And I think that the way you break that down, it's, it is, there's a difference between, and I've heard a lot of uh, next level coaches say that the game is faster and it's more of a challenge, right? Cause you're right. It's, it's more so on the coach uh, in baseball. It's, it's almost more so on the player and it's a manager. That's why they say manager in baseball versus coach and softball, you know, cause it is really a thing that you do. You do a lot of that uh, on your own, man. So uh, influence wise, you have a heavy influence on your players and it, it's huge, man. The influence you have on them. I'm curious though, looking over your body of work and we knew that about you with the TCU. That's really cool, man. Um, from, from your days of playing um, the, the conglomerate of influences that you've probably been a part of even your staff, who's been that biggest influence on you as a coach so far in your life, you know? Oh, uh, well, definitely my father you know everything that I do I have learned from my father you know from a, from the athletic side of it the work ethic side of it the leadership side of it those all come from my father my father coached me um from what up until I was 12 from when I was little <laughs> up until I was 12 and then um he let you know then I went on and played different levels with or different teams well, in high school and college and things like that but he instilled me the basics, the fundamentals. You know, you can you can win any game as long as your you, your team understands fundamentals. You know, you don't need just a bunch of all stars. You need a team that that does the fundamentals correctly, 
and mm-hmm. plays as a team, understands that it's a team. Um, and that's where softball comes in because you don't just need to hit the long ball or you don't just need to throw yep. it hard. You need to be able to move people. You need to be able to execute things. Um, and so I learned a lot of that from my dad. I still work with my dad every day. And so that's he's cool. always teaching me and, and learn. I, I'm just, I'm so proud that he's my father and he taught yeah. me so many things. And, and so, that's cool. um, you know, and then, I mean, I could break it down even farther, I guess when I, when I, after I left my dad, um, I was on a team called the stingers and there was a coach named Dave Martin and his mantra was, was drill, 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 drill. We did so many drills. So I think a lot of the drills that I bring into the practices with my girls, I learned when I was that age. And a lot of small group things and a lot of T work, a lot of soft toss, a lot of long ball throwing, um, things like that. I, I definitely got that from from him because that was how he was very – that's how his practices were, just drill, drill, drill. And so I really – I like that part of it. Um, I've definitely been instilled by that. We learned a lot. We got a lot better from that. And then I guess you could move – like when I was in high school, my freshman coach, Steve Wilson – great man. Um, just an amazing man. I think what I learned from him was, was the family aspect of it that, you know, you're not just nine ball players on a field, you know, mm-hmm. you are a family, you are people that go into battle with each other. And I think that's, that's why we were successful when in state, mm-hmm. um, because we all played together when we were in high school and similar to what my girls do right now, I have a lot of them that'll play together in high school and that'll be successful for them. And we all learned that, on and off the field, if you stay close and stay connected, and uh, you're going to be, you're going to have success. And and so I, I got that instilled. I think by Steve, he was Coach Wilson. He was a great influence there, you know. And then you move a little farther to my college days, where I had the Wright brothers, and then Coach Schlossinger at, at TCU. They were very time oriented with their practices, and Dane can probably contest to this. Yeah. I, <laughs> schedule, schedule, schedule. Schedule, yep. schedule, schedule. Um, you know, even at the national championship, I don't know how many coaches would have had practice, but I did. You know, we had a layover <laughs> till five o'clock where we didn't play. <laughs> yeah. put themselves in a position where we didn't play till 5 p.m. And I didn't feel comfortable with that. So we had hitting practice and a little defensive yep. practice at 11 o'clock. Yep. And uh, it was it was worked. I mean, it was a light workout yeah. and, and it kept the girls, you know, into what they were there for, you know, and, and it, yeah. they smashed the ball that night, which was yeah. exactly what we needed. But I think I learned that from those those three that at the elite level, you know, you have to be schedule oriented. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and, you know, you also need to understand that you may have a schedule, but if we're not doing bunk coverages correctly or we're not doing hit and runs correctly or we're not doing situational where there's first and third correctly you know we're we're not going to be moving to the next station until we get this done yeah and so i try to do that with our practices i try my best to be time oriented very very schedule oriented and i also try to run it like uh like like a college practice where Mm -hmm. i'm there but i have a lot of offensive coordinator defensive coordinator pitching coordinator things like that you know my yep. wife takes care of the middle infield. That's her specialty. I have my first base coach, Brian Carter, does the first baseman. Shane Green definitely helps us out with the outfield. He's amazing out there. Mm-hmm. Emily um, Emily Stevens helps me out with the pitchers. And then I live with yep. the catchers. And so when we get these yep. practices going and we split up for an hour and then we do some rotating and stuff, the girls get so much more work in small yep. groups and specified things. And that just makes them so much better. And and yeah. then I just walk around and oversee that like a head coach would do. And so yeah. sometimes the girls just don't like, they don't just like listening to me. You know, they like to hear <laughs> different things from different people yeah. and, and it helps them out. You know, plus my parents are awesome. You know, they, yeah. they like helping at what they're good at, you know, and what their yeah. passion is. And so when they get to do what their passion is, it, it just, it makes us 10 times better. And so makes it easier, huh? Makes it easier. Yeah, huh? yeah. And so I think, I think, my whole being of softball has been a conglomeration of a lot of people, um, you know, a little here, a little there, a little there. And I think it's, it's, it's making my girls good people, like excellent women. And, and softball is just a side note to that. Man, that's, yeah, I think that's something Dane and I talk about a lot. And uh, I know Dane, that actually kind of caveats to your question, but softball is like a secondary thing to being a great citizen. Like you said, a great person that I, I think that's, 
just thinking about the way you say that, just it, it, it softballs in good hands. I mean, Dan, that's yeah. right up your alley. Dan, with four. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. <clears throat> yeah. Um, on this next one, I just was wanting to know now that you're in the off season. You know, I know everybody's gearing up for tryouts, and uh, what do you see on the horizon now going into fall with the tryout season coming over? Um, what are some of the things that you look forward to going into the fall, going into that next step of 14s? Well, yeah. I, you know, our, our team, I didn't, nobody's leaving my team and I have two additions to the team. And so I've got my 11 already, which is a great thing. So I don't have to do trials. Yeah. Um, there's That's still, cool. there's still a couple out there that, that I would like to have. I mean, if, if I could get them, I would like to have them, but you know, my solid core is, is I have that. So I don't have to stay awake at night and, and yeah. worry. <laughs> I'm going to find a ball player. That's I cool. Find a- um, and so I, that is an, that's, I'm glad about that. You know, why y'all are stressing over tryouts. I'm, I don't need <laughs> to anymore. Um, and so, uh, but that's a testament to my, my young ladies, you know, that they want to stay yep. and they want to keep coming back and they want to keep getting better. And, and, you know, the national championship mm-hmm. last year is not, or this year is not, it's not the end for them. You know, they want to yep. keep going. Yep. That's so, so, I mean, cool, we'll, we'll definitely, you know, we usually get started, um, about, Oh, about a week or two after school starts, mm-hmm. start doing our, our fall workouts and play some fall tournaments. And then, you know, then we'll go into winter workouts and, and then we'll hit spring again next year doing 14 B and, and, you know, doing what we do. I like to travel. You know, I love, I love playing here in Wichita, but you know, I also don't like playing the same people twice. Right. So, right. New I, challenge. I want to, yep. Yep. So we, we like to get out of here. We like to go, you know, Kansas city, Topeka, Oklahoma, Iowa. Now it's fun. It's fun to get around and, and play new people. Cause you don't, you don't know what to expect. So well, yep. I think, I think you're also coach you're thinking about, cause these girls at 14 and 16, they're going to be doing that a lot in college. They're going to be traveling all over. And that's what you're doing. You're getting prepped for that. So getting them used to that now and the parents used to the travel schedule. I think you're just getting a step ahead of the game, you know? Well, I, I, yes, yes, we are, we are doing that. But what I'm trying to teach them is like uh, to, to go on with your preparation is like when we were in Iowa and we didn't play till five, you know, mm-hmm. you got to prepare yourself for this. You know, we were, we're only 12 right now, but if you're not mentally prepared and physically prepared, then you're prepared to fail. You know, I always right. am on that, that if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Mm. And so, um, you know, you can, Dane knows this. I'm a, I'm a big, no swimming after this time. Like I'm walking through, I give the girls curfews. If I see you after, after this time, we're going to be doing lunges. Like, I mean, that's, that's unfortunately I'm kind of a hard coach about that, but you know, the teams that, the teams that travel on their girls are up till midnight. They got to play the next morning. They're never successful. And while I want to be there and have a great time, I want the girls to understand that. I also want them to understand why we're there and, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's expensive to go to these things and parents work hard to put their children through these things. And, yeah. and the last thing that we want to do is, is to not be successful because of something that we're not doing ourselves. We're not preparing mm-hmm. ourselves. And so mm-hmm. I have a big regimen when we warm up, we do it the same way. I'm also kind of a, Oh, uh, uh, uh what do they call that? Where you got to do it all over the same. I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, creature, 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 creature have that yeah. creature. Of habit. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Like I gotta, I gotta wear the same clothes when they wear the same uniform. Like it's just uh, a yeah. superstitious. I'm very superstitious. Yeah. Yeah. So there you we go. have to warm up the same way we have to do. It. And if we don't, then I feel like we're, we're preparing to fail. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I, I like to, I like to say that I'm teaching the girls, you know, to prepare for their job. I mean, they're, they're 12, none of them have jobs right yeah. now. And so this is their job. They essentially mm-hmm. need to get themselves ready to give their best. And if they can't give their best, then they may not have a job essentially. So. That's awesome. I love that. I, I'm a big fan coach of, uh, and I'm sitting here, Dane, I always say, I'm making notes. Like I've got a whole page of notes. You're just kind of like listening to you talk and all that. I'm like, man, I'm going to steal that. I'm going to use that. No, I'm kidding. So I'm going to copyright that. <laughs> but no, I like I like the way you're breaking down the philosophy. And it is true. Like these parents work their tails off and no parent wants to go to Colorado to watch their kid, you know, bow out in the first round. I mean, I, we, we love it that they do that. We love it that we celebrate camaraderie and all that, but we can go have fun at Chuck E. Cheese if we're going to do that. But if we're going to nationals in a different state, let's let's put the money where our mouth is and i love it there's the coaches like you that still believe in that and it's and you're not doing it to be just for the win but you're respecting the parents and that's cool man i love that so i gotta take coaches a segment you're gonna love this so um 
we do something a little different on the show every single time. And every guest, man, they always crack up and they don't forget this. We do a little segment that's called Rapid Fire. When I was preparing you for this, I know you like to be prepared. This is going to throw you off your game a little bit because you can't prepare for this part, okay? This is intentionally knee-jerk type stuff. So um, we have a great fan base and they're really cool. And they give us lots of wonky, weird, just off-the-wall questions, okay? So, um, and you uh, you gotta spit it out rapid. Now we do bet on this. Dane and I always bet. So the winner gets lunch provided by the loser so i'm hoping you'll help me out here and what Where i think are you you're going to lunch Where uh, red going lobster to lunch? red, red, red lobster, lobster man, man. Yeah, we're going go to, go to bonefish or, or something or, well, or, 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 or 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 i'm a package of ramen or something yeah like it's what it's really going to be is ramen's name thank you man <laughs> so so these <laughs> questions it depends on the budget yeah yeah we're on, a shoestring, so, we're on a shoestring budget around here so yeah we're gonna do I what we can it. So imagine, Coach, for a minute that anything's possible, past or present, uh, time doesn't exist, people being past or still alive doesn't exist. So you're just anything can happen, okay? But you got to pick one, okay? So first question, you're going back, and you, as as Coach Daniel, get to pick one of these two ladies to be your starting pitcher at Nationals, okay? Um, no no disrespect to your team. This is just a, we'll just say it's a guest player, all right, for this event. And the two ladies you get to choose from for this event, you get to pick Amanda Scarborough, or Jenny Finch. Who we go? Oh, I take Amanda in a heartbeat. Dang it! I didn't have that one, Dane. I didn't have that. My Atlanta, that was fast. Uh, did you? Did you have that, Dane? No, I had Finch. I, I had Finch too. And Amanda's oh, no. great, but Amanda. Oh, Amanda in a heartbeat. Addie and I, Addison, my daughter. We we do a lot. Of, we watch a lot of Amanda. Um, okay. Addison pitches very similar to Amanda, and okay. and I I really enjoy. She has a lot of videos that you can you can watch. Oh yeah. I really enjoy how she breaks things down. Oh, and, yeah, we, and, we've so, talked. Yeah, her. <laughs> I take Amanda and Harvey. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Amanda she's awesome, Okay, good. Got it. So next one. You are required for this year's Hallow Scream. You know, all the coaches like to love dressing up, right, for Hallow Scream and the October tournaments and all that. So you are required to, um, let's say that Nationals, because you want it, you have to, in honor of your players, have to wear one of these two costumes all game long. Okay, you have to wear a costume, uh, but I'm talking like head to tail. You got to do the full thing, okay? Mm-hmm. So you have to walk around coaching during Hallow Scream, and we're going to pretend like this year Hallow Scream's at Nationals. You got to walk around in a full-on Scooby-Doo outfit or a full-on Furby outfit. Which one are you going with? No, I do Scooby-Doo. Man, oh, yeah. I am, I'm striking out, dude. I, was, I expect it because Furby's kind of intense, kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like they, uh, they got that look Scooby- about it. I had Furby. Scooby-Doo. No, I'm a dog guy, 100%. I, I love dogs. He's a classic so. other. Yep, yep, man. yep, he's old school. Like I, I would do Scooby Doo. I didn't have. Okay, well, let me see if I can redeem but myself because Dane, you're ahead now, right now. Now, now, would he have to talk like Scooby the whole way? Yep, yep. <laughs> you got to do the whole thing, man. Got to do it. <laughs> so, so next one. So you are sponsored. Uh, the, the local Wichita radio catches wind of your championship, so you get a chance to have one of these two teams sponsor you as long as you come on and do a commercial with them. Okay, they found out you won national, so these two and they're great great local businesses but you have to come on and be like i am daniel i approve of this message you got to come on and do a commercial with them the two entities that you get to choose from is a supercar guys or b crazy jay's bed shop you come and do a commercial which one are you going with oh goodness um <laughs> probably i don't know probably the Oh, goodness. I probably would do the bed one because I'm not a big fan of what they say at the end. Buying a car doesn't have to suck. I don't I don't, <laughs> I don't like a bunch of little kids saying that. I mean, okay. just, I don't. So I probably I got would do you. the bed one just because, I mean, I have little ones and I don't want Caden running I got around. You. Buying a car doesn't have to suck. So. <laughs> you, you do it so well, though, man. Although, like, although <laughs> I, I am a huge car guy. Dane knows that I have. Yeah. I'm, I like cars. And so man. that's a hard one. But if I had to like endorse one, I probably would do the crazy bed. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am proud to say I'm over three. <laughs> Getting slaughtered here, Dane. So next one. Oh, yeah. You uh again, it's, this your questions are weird. So let's say you have to do tryouts, okay? And <laughs> Let's just say you have to do it. You're picking up two or three girls uh, and you're required something about this. You're required to walk around and you have to introduce yourself and shake everybody's hand. And you don't get to say your name. You have to say one of these two names. You have to say, hi, I'm coach. And these are the two choices. You have to walk around and say, hi, I'm coach Craig Snyder or hi, I'm coach Tony La Russa. You can't, you can't break. You can't smile. You can't act like that. You know, you let on. Got to walk around and say. Tony La Russa. Okay. I had that yeah. one. I got one finally, Dane. So. Oh, yeah. The legend. Okay. Get a. 
Okay. So last, last one. So let's say um, we like to do a lot of movie what ifs and things like that. So um, we're going to fast forward a couple of years. You know, you've you got a couple of your girls that are going to college and they want, they want to do a local documentary about Daniel Gutsman's life in softball. Right. And you get two people that you get to pick from, they get to play you in this lifetime movie special. Okay. It's going to oh, be okay. on all the greats. Right. So it's going to be, you know, we get a great title, like prepare to fail. It's fail to, something like that. It's going to be a cool mm -hmm. title. And you get two people to get to play this. You can either go with Tony Danza or David Hasselhoff to play you in this movie. Oh, so who's goodness. it going to be? Definitely Tony Danza. I mean, he's the boss. Who's the boss? Yeah. I love it. I love <laughs> oh, it. Yeah. So, you go. I got two, Dane. I got two. Uh, How'd you do on that one, Dane? So. I'm, I'm four for five, man. I man, thought you were going to ask me. I thought you were going to ask me who I would get to play me, and I'm like, well, you know, probably Thor. I look a lot like. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I see the resemblance. Yeah. A little, little, no, a little more chiseled. That's a running joke at our at practice that the girl <laughs> Emily said something one time and I said I look like Thor and she made a joke <laughs> about it. So all the girl it's it's a it you had to have been there. It was hilarious. So that's why I, I can I, I can that. I can see the resemblance from the eyebrows up, coach. No yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, when, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, because we're both men like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Man. I love it. That's fantastic. Well, thanks for being a good sport, coach. We love that. It's just a little segment we do. So I'll give it back to no, Dane for that fine. final segment. <laughs> Yeah, Coach, on this final segment, we call it an open <laughs> mic. You know, we kind of open the floor to our guests to maybe give a philosophy or a mantra they've carried through the years that's kind of helped them through the various stages of their career and also to kind of pass something down like a nugget of knowledge to that next generation of, of ballers coming up. Is there something that you've carried through your college years and now that you're coaching that could kind of help the next generation come up to, you know, help them get through either a tough time or help them to – get a little bit better at what they're trying to do? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I believe that, I mean, and we've talked about this, it, it's all preparation and, and that's a life thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you prepare, I mean, just like this, I prepared for this thing. And, mm -hmm. and so you gotta, you gotta do the groundwork. You gotta mm -hmm. do the late nights. You gotta do the sweaty days. You gotta do the groundwork to be successful, but you also have to understand that this is a team sport. And sometimes the best sacrifice that you can make or the best play you can make is not making a play. It's actually just being a supporter um, and take, take failure, um, you know, with a grain of salt. Uh, like it's okay to fail. I mean, that's why God, you know, makes us fall off our bicycles. So we get back up and learn how to keep going. And so rather than dwelling on the moment that you strike out or dwelling on the moment that you may not get the starting position or dwelling on the moment that you didn't win the game, look at why you didn't. And I guarantee most of that comes back to preparation and what mm -hmm. you can do to fix that and how you can get better at that. And, and don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, most people try to be quiet and not say anything or, you know, are, are afraid that somebody's going to say no, and that's okay. You know, people say no all the time and, and you just move on with it. But most people, if you just ask, you know, can you help me with this? Or are you willing to do that? They'll surprise you. They'll come out mm. and, 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 and be there in your corner and show you how to do things. And Man. so that's what I would say. I would say to the young kids, um, and that's what I preach to my girls, you know, everybody, everybody says, and we talk about this at practice, you know, the two things that I can control is, Effort and attitude, you know, and those are those are the two things that you technically can control. But, you know, if you're not given effort into preparation and your attitude's not great during preparation, then the final outcome's not going to be good at all either. And True. so you got to you got to, you know, dress correctly. You got to make sure you have all your equipment. You know, don't be rushed. Don't be the person who shows up right at the last second. Get there five minutes early. So what's the worst that can happen? I mean, that's that's the way you should be in life. You know, if somebody says this thing starts at seven, we'll be ready at six fifty. You know, what's the mm. worst you do? You sit there and wait. Um, nobody likes, to, nobody likes to be late. And when you're late, you're always, you're, you're rushed. And when you're rushed, yeah. that's when you don't do very well. And so prepare, um, you know, if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. And I love so that. That's, that's my big one. Yeah. I would definitely, you know, tell the young kids to, that, 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 and then to be, to be okay that you're going to fail. You're going to, you're going to get knocked down. That's why we get back up, you know, yeah. you get put in the hall of fame for hitting the ball, you know, three out of four times, not even that one out of three times you get put in the yeah. hall of fame. And so, you know, it's okay. You know, that that's okay. Yeah. I love that. 
Coach, I'm just – I mean it when I say uh, I, I learn something every episode. Yeah. Uh, we do yeah. – I always tell Dane, we do this kind of just uh, to learn so much. And I love the – something that stood yeah. out to me, what you said, uh, is making the best play and pre- preparing yourself. Um, and sometimes the best play is letting your teammate shine. Um, this mm-hmm. is an individual slash team sport, and sometimes mm-hmm. you may have prepared all of the scenarios you can. And that mm-hmm. I think what's cool about it is it translates to life, like you said. This is beyond softball. Hey, maybe that next play is you're preparing to take that math test for one of the kids, right? Or they're preparing to get a job that they want to do. Um, this teaches them, hey, this is a stepping stone into real life, right? And it's it's fun. We love this. We get to do this. But sometimes making yeah. that best play is I, maybe I do need to go to bed a little early tonight because I got an interview tomorrow. Or I got a job, you know, or I got a, a test yeah. or whatnot. So I like the way you're correlating real life to sports. We all love sports. Yeah. Every athlete, every coach like yourself you got to give it all you got and you got to make that best yeah. play. That's powerful, man. So thank you. Well, you, you just, yeah. I mean, what is the, I don't know what the statistic is, but like what 1% of all high schoolers play college sports or something right. like that. It's, it's yeah. not very high. And so yeah. like you just said, you know, these girls, they, they need to, they, it, this is their job. I mean, we have a contract, you know, when the girls sign uh, in the fall, when we start back up again, they have a contract. And on that contract, it states that if your school work is not B or higher, or if that's you awesome. have, outstanding assignments that are not turned in. You're not going to get to practice. And if you don't practice, you don't play. Um, That's cool. Those are my rules. And, you know, there has been a few times where girls have had to miss practice because they need to do an assignment or they need to study. I mean, this is, this is life, you know, softball is, is, is an elective sport. And so you need to get your primary things done before you can have fun. That's awesome. And I'm a big believer in that. And, and so I've, I've instituted that with my children, you know, if they don't have something done, they're not going to go to their sports. But yeah. at this level, I also believe that multiple sports is a good thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't want girls to get stuck playing one sport. Um, and so I like, I like a lot, almost all of my girls play different sports, volleyball, basketball, soccer, you know, and that's, that's a great thing. And that keeps them, it keeps them out of trouble, but that also keeps them doing their schoolwork, their scholastic work. Um, cause they have to keep up on that. They can't play their other sports. So yes, sir. it goes along with what you're saying. You know, you got to prepare, um, yep. prepare for life yeah. and this well, is the best yep. way that these girls can learn life skills. I, I think it's neat. And then yeah. I'll give it back to you to close it uh, Coach. Thank you. I, I know that, uh, I will say I wasn't prepared for how much knowledge you're going to drop. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's very depth. It's very in depth. I, I usually, I, we really do say we, we, we learn a lot, but I mean it when I say yeah. I got pages of notes. Yeah. So Dane, help me, help me close that thing. Man. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and like I say, I mean, as many times as we've talked, you know, at these tournaments we've gone to, or even whenever I see you at a tournament when Sydney's playing with her team, I, I always enjoy the conversation with you because I'm always learning something. You always give me something, whether it's a couple sentences or something like this interview you've, you've graced us with today. I, I want to thank you for always being willing to, to teach something to no matter if it's your 10 year olds or to me, a 47 year old man. Thank you for that. You, know, you carry that and, and you do it with such uh, grace and, and I thank you for it. Dane, Dane no. I would have thought, I would have thought maybe 45, Dane. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What, well, what I mean, you, I, you know, I tell my girls, like, that's, that's our mantra with practice. Like, I would like the girls to learn something at practice. If you don't, yeah. if yeah. you don't learn something new at practice, then we're not really making the game, you know, exciting for you. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. it's, uh, that, that's a big deal. Or when we have a new girl practice. Or, or a guest player practicing and I'm like did you learn something did you learn something I mean yesterday mm-hmm. I had a tryout yesterday and and I yeah. asked her like did you learn anything and she, oh my gosh I learned so much well then I did my job yeah. even if That's you awesome. decide not to come here you learn something new from from experiencing it with me and and that yeah. that's that's why we're out here you know I don't get paid for this yeah. but but I get paid in in, in understanding that their girls are learning something, they're becoming better people, yep. better athletes, they're understanding the game. And I think that's, that's a big jump at 14. Now I'm going to get to see the girls. Um, you know, I, I was telling Linnea and Corbin and, and Caitlin the other day that next year I'm going to let them start calling pitches in some games. You know, mm-hmm. they need to learn the game. And, and that's yep. a big step for them to learn how to do these things. And so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm very excited for that. And uh, wow. I didn't get to say this earlier, but you know, there's nothing more prouder than I can be. I got to, to go to this national championship with my two daughters. There's not That's a so lot cool. of people that get to say that, you know, my, my 12 year old and my 10 year old, 
Uh, they're both outstanding athletes. Both of them I, I can't be more proud of. And as a dad, that's just something I don't think I'll ever top. And I know when they listen to that, that that's why I'm saying this. When they listen to this, I want them to know that, that, that I, I can't, I can't do any better. Uh, you know, to have them go there and to play and to both be important um, yeah. in the, in those wins um, in those games, it just, it, it just, <laughs> I said, there's no words for it. I'm just so happy. And I got to spend it with my wife, you know, in the dugout and my son would, had a pitch. He had, he was looking at pitches that I was calling so he could understand what was happening. And it just That's awesome. family, 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 you know, softball has been a great thing for my family. And I am so proud that I got to have that experience. And, and my two daughters will get to say that, that they got to play together and, mm -hmm. and their team won this and they were part of that team. And, and I was, I was a lucky man just to be in charge of it. And so man, I, that's what I it's can't about. do any better. That's what it's all about, yep. coach. And that what is, saying, that that's why we do what we do. Yep. That's why we yep. do this, man. So I will tell you this yep. coach, uh, Dan and I mean it very, very heartfelt. Yeah. Let this be the first of many. Um, Coach, we never want it to be just a one episode type thing. You're part yeah. of the alum now. Once you come on the show, it's an alum. We have an alumni. So you're yeah. part of that uh, group. So um, before the next national championship, because I'm sure we have more, let's make sure we do catch up. <laughs> well, I, I, can't I hope to... it's a real one. Like, I mean, like I told that, I told my daughters, I said, the only way that I think this gets better is if I'm sitting in, in uh, Oklahoma City. Like, there you go. Yeah, the, there you go. You know, we made jokes. I made jokes to Addy. You know, when they hit a home run, they bring the ball to the to the parents in the stands, and yeah. we were watching it this year. They kept giving it to the mom. You know, and that's great. <laughs> I'm not taking anything away from that, but I told Addy, I said, "No, I, I promise you, I'm pushing your mother out of the way." <laughs> taking that ball. <laughs> this, this, the storyline. We're gonna yeah. get a slow mo of that as you're just diving. I love it, man. Yeah. Well, no, oh, no, coach. Thank you. Thank you, Dane, for yeah, making the yeah. connection uh, for this. Yeah. This is awesome. Uh, uh, Coach, it, it was my, it was my pleasure. Do. Yeah, it was my pleasure. It's something I felt I had to do because, you know, uh, I I respect you a lot, Coach, and, and I wanted yeah. everybody to see you in the same light that I do. So thank you for coming on. Coach, you uh, – I appreciate it. Yeah, Coach, I, I say this in closing. You uh, you have a lot of buzz about your, your episode. We got a lot of people waiting to hear from you. So this will be out later on tonight, um, probably a couple yeah. hours max. I'll make sure I text you first. Um, but it'll go out to Wichita, and then it'll go out across the world, Portugal, Finland, yep. anywhere you can think of, man. It's about 24 countries worldwide that this yep. will air on. So uh, just to spread that message a little bit further. So don't be surprised if your kids get a, a cheer for winning championship from, like, somewhere in, uh, in uh, Portugal, man. It might happen. <laughs> so it's pretty cool, okay? so Yeah, well, I uh, I appreciate you guys. You know, I told you yeah. yesterday that I think what you guys are doing is thank you bringing a lot of information to the sport, a lot of uh, buzz to the sport. Um, you know, a lot of buzz to Wichita, and yeah. it's yeah. people like you that that are going to help with that. I told Dane this that this is a huge recruiting thing. You know, now that the yeah. girls are getting older. Yeah. This is a platform to get people out there to to get my girls seen to get all the girls in Wichita scene at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah. so I'm really thankful that you guys are doing this and, yeah. and making connections and it, it just, it, it couldn't be any better. And, and, and yeah. I just met you, Josh, but I've known Dane and, and yeah. I, just, I think you guys are great people. I really, oh, thank you, coach. Dane, you say that about me all the time, but, but I, I enjoy talking with you. I, I, when I see you, you know, a quick trip during the day, you know, it's just like, Hey, I know that guy. And I, I mean, I could stand there and talk to you all day long. And so I, I just, I appreciate your family. You guys are great well, people. Well, coach, I will say it's uh, the, the feelings mutual. It's been a true, absolute privilege. Um, we can't say enough. So we'll make sure like I'm first of many. Um, I know that's going to be a lots of tournaments we're playing together and our family to yours, the softball family just got a little bit bigger. So again, welcome back anytime. We'll make sure that we make it happen. Uh, and thank you again. We'll, we'll get you back tonight, but uh, let's make this first of many. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys again. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Good luck in the, the future, and, and I'll talk to you later. Of course. Thank you, Coach. Have a good night, thank man. You. you take care. Bye. You're welcome to drop off. But you guys, I'm telling you, man, that's uh, that's one of those ones where you just you can't say enough. Um, wow. Wow is the word that comes to mind. Just wow. Thinking about his knowledge and his depth and just the way that the knowledge, the breakdown, the way that Coach really said all of the uh, – the things that you want to say, but doesn't sound as cool as when a coach like that level says it, that's just pretty, pretty amazing. So you guys, on behalf of the Dane and Josh show, that was a, that was a one for the books, Dane, breaking down all the things he said. Um, I, yeah. I wish I could just take all those things and copyright it. That was, that was one for the books, man. So yeah. what'd you think, and, Dane? And like I say, with, with, with a coach like that, you know, the message he has, you know, 
it, it's timeless, you know, hard work, preparation, all those things that what he incorporates in his practices and, and what he does. That's what makes his team go around. And, and it's no wonder that he's grown. So. Well, wow. well, guys, I will, I will uh, end it on that note. I'm just speechless. We'll get this. I want to get this out. I'm excited to get this out. So um, that was a great week. You guys will actually take a few days off. Uh, and this Friday, we have one more this week. Um, and the same breath as we say, Coach Gutsman, I feel like it's just as important equally this Friday, we get to bring on Coach Gasso. DJ Gasso is coming on, guys, this Friday. So it's going to be a great week. Um, so don't forget, as always, on behalf of the Dane and Josh show, that we love you. And Dane? Thank you for listening.